Hello there, thank you for joining me once again. In this tutorial, I'm going to tie you up a, another classic wet fly. I haven't done a wet fly in a while, so I figured I'd tie one up for you again. And this guy is the uh, ginger quill. There's also the dry fly version, and this is the uh, wet fly version here. And I thought I'd like, to talk, excuse me, I thought you might like to see that one tied up, so. I'll get him a device, a new hook in, and I'll get started for you here. The hook is a standard wet fly, must have $33.99. And I'll tie him a little bit bigger size for the video on a 10 here. We'll use a size 10, so get that locked down in the vise. And the pattern calls for gray thread, so I got some UTC 70 gray. And I'll start about a hook eye length behind here, the eye. And we'll begin to wrap back, touching wraps to about just in front of the barb there so get that thread base laid down and we'll snip off that excess a couple more wraps back okay and the tail is just simply some ginger clover hen hackle fiber so I have some here I'm going to strip off the stem and I don't want an overly thick tail so get a few of these stripped off here and tie them in and we'll measure it up about hook shank length. Switch hands. Tie it in with a pinch loop. Just like so here. Okay, there's our tail. Make a couple wraps. Alrighty. Let's go on a fiber there. Oh, I'm going to snip it. There we go. Okay, now for the body, it's a stripped ginger hackle and I stripped all the bar barbels off it so we're going to use the quill ginger quill and I'm going to tie that in next here we'll just catch that in underneath just like so and I'm going to wrap back a couple wraps and then wrap all that down I want to try to if I can keep that underneath the shank if it doesn't it doesn't it's not going to be a into the world just try to keep it underneath if you can if not just wrap it up just like so we just want to create a smooth base to wrap our quill here for the body and we'll come up to right about there we left off started our thread I mean okay so now and I must should mention I've soaked this quill for about half an hour or so, close to an hour. That way, when you wrap it, it shouldn't uh, break or split on you, which they they can do very easily. So now I'm going to be, begin to wrap my quill. Just work my way up the body here. Okay. And once we get towards the uh, we want to tie off it's usually if it's going to break or split that's it'll do it on the uh, thickest portion of the quill just going to grab my hackle pliers here and grab the end of this guy to finish wrapping but soaking them makes quite a difference it makes them more pliable and I'll make one more wrap and then we'll tie this guy off underneath catch him there like so couple wraps in front and underneath once again and I'm gonna wrap that forward move the pliers and we'll snip that off right there and wrap that down good and snug just like so there we go quite a few wraps there to put that in nice and secure now for added durability I'm gonna take the good old solar res bone dry here and I'm going to put some over that quill body. I like to try to, when I tie flies, I, I figure you should die, try to tie them as durable as possible to make them last. Oh, you can catch a lot more fish on them, makes sense to me anyway. So I try to make my flies as durable as possible. Yeah. Okay. Let's get a thin coat over that whole quill there. Make all the difference in the world for our durability. 
Okay, that's fine. Now I bring in my curing light here and zap that guy up. Cure that solar res. Okay, it only takes a few seconds, so. Alrighty, that's fine. Okay, next step is the uh, hackle for this guy, and I have a, another ginger, the ginger hen hackle here. I have it re the, ready. This the uh, fuzzy stuff stripped off, and I got the tip here ready to tie in by the tip. So I'm just going to stroke those fibers back and cut a little triangle for the tie-in point. And I'm going to catch that in underneath here. Wrap forward on that, nice and snug. Three or four good wraps. Okay, stop my thread right behind the eye. Okay, next I'm going to bring in my plunger style hacker pliers here and grab that quill. This can be a little tricky, just go easy with it when you're wrapping these and just hopefully they won't break on you. Sometimes it happens. And we're just going to wrap all them fibers back here once I get it situated, get it going the way I want it. Being a little stubborn, there we go. Okay, I'll come up around. And I'm gonna tie that guy off right there. Couple wraps. Secure that, release the pliers. Now the first thing I wanna do is just sweep everything back. Tie back on that a few wraps. And then I'm going to come in and find that little stem and snip him out of there. Just like so. There we go. Now the next thing I want to try to do is take all these fibers here. And uh, I want to more or less form a beard on the fly underneath. I'm going to try to take them all, sweep them down and back. Pull down on them. And back at the same time and then make my wraps back. Just grab them again and wrap back nice and snug wraps there okay we're almost back to where I want to tie in the wings so okay that looks pretty good right there but I do want to trim out a couple stray fibers here that aren't cooperating there we go and I'm just going to pull them down make a couple more wraps back there we go that's better Alrighty, so there's our hackle underneath, our beard on this fly. Okay, now the next step is our wing. And the wing is duck quill segments, and I have one from the right and left here. Got them paired up and ready to tie in. Just got to get them situated here. Okay. Make sure they're even. Alrighty, that looks pretty good there. Now, place those on. I don't want them to come back too far. A little ways back on the tail, and then we'll come up on these and come down. And I'm just going to let my thread hang there. And then I'm going to pull straight down, and I'm going to pull straight up as well. And then I'm going to wrap. Just wrap four, three to four snug wraps. Then look at your wings and see how they look. Those look fine right there. They're right on top where I want them. Sort of a tent shape there. That's what I was looking for. So, alrighty. Now I'll come in. Snip off that excess on an angle there. Okay, and, okay. And what I always do for a little more durability is I like to uh, take a little shot of head cement and put on them wing butts before I wrap the head up. So I'll put a little shot here. Okay, doesn't seem to want to come out for me. Here we go. Just let that soak in there for a sec. Okay, now all we got to do now is build the head up on this guy and he'll be a done deal. So, 
we'll begin to wrap the head up on them. Okay. Just going to spin my thread here to cord that up a little bit more. There we go. Alright, just cover up all them wing butts. Form a hit on them here. That looks fine right there. I'm just going to do my whip finish. And he's a done deal. I get three or four turns here is fine. Okay, there we go. Now we'll just tighten that down nice and snug here. Pull down on it and I'll come in. Snip up my excess thread there. There we go. Okay, so he's pretty much a done deal. I just got one more step that I like to do. And that is come in with the bone dry once again and cover those thread wraps. Okay. Just go all the way around the head here with it. Okay. There we go. That's fine. Now I'll come up with the light once again and we'll cure this guy up. Okay, that should be fine. And there we go folks, another size 10 ginger quill wet fly. Another classic wet fly pattern. I really enjoy tying these and I hope you enjoy watching me tie them and also give them a try yourself so until next time I want to thank you for watching but before I go I want to say if you haven't subscribed yet and it's first time viewing hit that good old subscribe button appreciate it a great deal and also share with your friends if you want and uh, until next time Happy tying everyone. Stay safe out there. I shall see you again soon. And so long for now folks.